Hype Team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2016-2017 Teacher Workshop Series. Today we're working on number 17 on the new General Curriculum Math Subtest. You'll notice here we're given a number line, and we're going to have to be matching up that number line with inequalities. And here we have inequalities, and not just any old inequalities, inequalities with absolute value. So lots of elements going on in this problem. I'll start today by reading over number 17, and then we'll go through and solve it together, okay? Let's begin. It says here, use the number line below to answer the question that follows. They give you a number line, and they say, which of the following inequalities best represents the graph shown on the number line? So let's start by interpreting this number line here. Very, very important. You'll notice here that we have two sets of values. We have values that are equal to negative 5, and and all values in our solution set that are less than negative 5. So we're going to describe this portion of the number line as all values where x is less than or equal to negative 5. Now what about this part of the the other part? Well this part here includes values in our set where x is greater than or equal to 1. x could be any value in the solution set which is greater than or equal to 1. And I should point out here that x is actually in all these uh, problems here. All these inequalities have an x value. Now the correct inequality, with the, in the correct inequality, if we put in a value, let's say, that's less than negative 5, it should work. Or if we put in a value that's like equal to 1 or greater than 1, it should work. Another way of thinking about that is if we put in a value that is not in this on this number line, let's say we plopped in a value, uh, some other value here that's not here, like negative 2, and it happened to work, then that would be a, a wrong inequality and we could cross it off. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but but uh, we, have some, we have some things here. These are going to be the solution sets that are only going to work for the correct inequality. All values where x is less than or equal to negative 5 are all values of x where x is greater than or equal to 1. Now, one real quick way to solve this is to kind of use this logic where we're going to test out a value of x that works and a value of x that doesn't work and hopefully we can eliminate ones that um, we can eliminate some of these inequalities. For example, we know that uh, 1 here is in our solution set. So let's say that x is equal to 1. We know it's in our solution set, so 1 should work. I'm going to put a big smiley face next to 1 here. 1 should work, right? Now, I'm going to put 1 in, and I'm going to test it out real quick. It should work, so any inequalities that, that 1 works, I'm going to keep. But, but if 1 doesn't work, I'm going to cross it out because I know that that inequality is wrong. Let's start with this one right here. This says 1 minus 2. 1 minus a 2 is negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is a positive 1. Positive 1 is greater than or equal to 3. Is that a true statement? No, it's not. It, that doesn't make sense. So I just substituted in a value that's supposed to be in our solution set, and it didn't work for this 1. Guess what? We can cross this off because it's, a, it's supposed to work. Yay? We just eliminated one of the options using 1. And what could be easier than 1 in, in doing calculations? I mean, 1, you can add, subtract, divide, easy. So that's an easy one you can do in your head. Now, if we do these others really quickly in our head, 1 plus 2 is 3, and the absolute value of 3 is 3. This one checks out. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. 2 is greater than or equal to negative 2. That works out. This one here, 1 plus 3 is 4. Absolute value of 4 is 4. 4 is greater than or equal to negative 2. That checks out. So 1 helps me eliminate the first one. Fine, I'll take it. We've eliminated A. Now what else could we substitute? Well, let's say that x is equal to something that doesn't work. So here, this area here on the number line does not work. So if I can find a value here it shouldn't work. And know which value I'm going to choose? I'm going to choose 0 and put a big frowny face for 0. 0. 
big frowny face because zero does not work. So if I input zero here for x into b, c, and d, it shouldn't work. So any of these equations where zero does work, we could cross it out. Now let's do d. Zero plus three is three. Absolute value of three. Is three greater than or equal to negative two? Yes, it does. But it's not supposed to work. Remember, zero is not supposed to work. It's supposed to be a frowny face. So that so it does work, but guess what? It's not supposed to. Why we cross it off? What about this one right here? Because it's it's not supposed to be in our solution set, and apparently it is in this uh, inequality solution set. We crossed it off. It's not the one we're looking for. What about C? Zero minus three is negative three. Absolute value of negative three. Three is three greater than or equal to negative two. Yes, it is, but it's not supposed to be. Frowny face. And finally, we have this one, B. B is actually the correct answer, team. Big smiley face for B. If we put in 0 here, 0 plus 2 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. 2 is, is not greater than or equal to 3. So when we input 0 into our set, the answer doesn't make sense, and it's not supposed to. Now look what I did, team. I just used a value that should work like 1 and a value that shouldn't work that's not in the not in the uh, in the solution set not and it in it and I was able to eliminate options and get to be real quick okay you want to kind of do stuff like that on the day of your test a strategy uh, I'll show you the traditional way of solving these inequalities and the by the way the answer here is B but but let's do the traditional way we have the absolute value of X plus 2 is greater than or equal to 3. The absolute value sign kinda does throw a ripple. You know, this could be a positive value that's greater than or equal to 3, or it could be an, an opposite value that when you take the absolute value of it, it flips it. So in order to solve for x here, what we have to do is we have to break this into two different equations. The first one is assuming that this is positive. So it would just be x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 3. The second one is assuming that this value is negative and was reversed. And the way we show that is we do x plus 2. That stays the same. What changes is the inequality flips. Instead of this value, x plus 2, being greater than or equal to, it becomes less than or equal to a negative 3. Now we solve each one of these, each one of these uh, um, different equations, inequalities, for x. I'll do this one right here. I, I'm solving for x, so I minus 2 on both sides. We get on this side, x could be values that are less than or equal to negative 5. And on this side, minus the 2, minus the 2, we have for on this solution set, x is all values that are greater than or equal to 3 minus 2 is 1, which, is, which was our original inequalities. This one is this, this one is this. Okay? All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day, team. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2016 Teacher Workshop Series. This year, Go Academy is holding a whole new round of workshops math, science, English and history, early childhood education, foundations of reading, ESL and SEI. These are hands-on workshops designed to help teachers pass their teacher certification exams. I encourage you to check out an upcoming workshop. We're holding them in Massachusetts, New York, North Carolina, Florida, California, New Hampshire, Vermont, and a couple other states. Check out our workshop. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care.